Welcome to the jump. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine um, the number of positive real, negative real, or real, positive, real, negative, as well as imaginary or um, complex roots. So basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the Descartes Rule of Signs. And Descartes Rule of Signs is not going to tell you, again, what exactly uh, the roots are. It's just going to tell you how many you have. And it's a good measure, um, especially if you're working on a problem to you know, determine um, if you found the zeros, if that's correct, um, as, well as, as well as if you don't have a calculator and you're determining what all the zeros are, you can, uh, you can make sure you can kind of verify, again, what, how many of each zero you need, positive, negative, and that are going to be real or complex. So you know, the easiest thing to look at this is, remember, when we're looking at our power of our um, polynomial or a degree, that's going to tell us how many zeros, um, zeros we're going to have. So here I'm going to have three zeros, three, four zeros, and five zeros, or solutions, or roots if they're equations. Okay, So that's going to tell us how many they are. But are they all real? Are some of them complex? Um, we don't know. And that's what Descartes' rule of science is going to help us to do that. So there's two different ways to do it. The first thing is to look at the, well, basically, there's two ways to do this. We're going to look at the number of positive. Then we're going to look at the number of negative. And determine what the number of positive and negatives are, we can come up with how many complex or imaginary roots we're going to have. So the easiest thing to do is coming up with the positive. And the reason why that's the easiest is because you don't have to do anything um, basically to the equation. All you simply need to do is determine, determine the number of sign changes between each of the terms. Now, this is an x cubed, which is a positive x cubed, right? So if I go from a positive x cubed to a positive 2x squared, I don't have any sign changes. And you can see all of my terms are positive. So therefore, the number of positive solutions is 0 real or 0 positive real solutions. Okay. Since there's no sign changes of the original equation, there's no zero solution. So if you're going to use like the rational zero test and you are going to you know, use synthetic division to test your zeros, guess what? You don't have to use any of those negative rational zeros. Because if it's a rational zero, it can, oh, I'm sorry, you're not, sorry, you're not going to use any of the positive rational zeros. You're only going to test negative rational zeros from the rational zero test. So that's why you know, that, can cut up, that can cut out half of the work you have. So that's helpful. Now let's look at negative. And negative is usually what gets students. So to do negative, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in f of negative x. So basically, that's going to be negative x cubed plus 2 times negative x squared plus 5 times negative x plus 4. So instead of plugging in x, I'm not going to plug in negative x. And what's important about this is determining what happens when you raise a negative number to a power, if it's even or odd. And let's take a look at it. If you took negative 2 and you square that, or if you take negative 2 and cube it, negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 cubed is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Right? Make sure that you put them in parentheses. OK, well, negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is a negative 8. And what I want to drive home to you, which will make this a little bit easier, any time you have a negative number or a negative variable raised to an odd power, it's always going to be negative. Any time you have a negative number or negative power or variable raised to an even power, it doesn't matter, 2, 4, 6, 8, right? it's always going to be positive. So I can do this. I can simplify this kind of quickly. Negative x cubed is just negative x cubed. Negative x squared is positive x squared. Times 2x is a positive 2x squared. Negative x times 5 times positive 5 is a negative 5x and plus 4. Now let's go and do the sign changes. So you can see I have one sign change, two sign changes, and three sign changes. So therefore, for the negatives, there's three negative real solutions. Now, <clears throat> this is where it kind of gets confusing. And a lot of students get this. But Descartes' rule of signs, what it says is you have the number of sign changes minus an even number. So I have 
0 with 0. So I can't subtract an even number from 0. But if I have negative, if I have three negative solutions, I really I don't want to really need those. I already kind of said it. I was just kind of showing it. But if I have three um, negative solutions, I can subtract an even number from three, which would be two. So that means I have three or one negative real solutions. Okay. Now, why is that helpful? Well, how many solutions do we have? Three, right? Well. I know I have 0 positive. So if I had three, if all my solutions were negative, real solutions, I would have 0 complex. But what if I had only one negative real solution? Then I would have 2 or 0, right? I would have two negative if there was two complex, I'm sorry, two complex if there was one negative. I would have 0 complex if three of them were negative. So 2 or 0 complex solutions. And remember, complex solutions inc include a real number and an imaginary number. OK, complex, go in there. So therefore, that's how you're going to use um, Descartes rule signs to help you out with that. So let's get into the next one. Again, let's do the sign changes. So here I go from a positive to a negative, negative to a positive, positive to a negative. So again, there's three sign changes, right? This is for the positive. There's three sign changes, but you've got to subtract an even number. I can't subtract a larger not even number than 2. So 3 minus 2 would be 1. So I have 3 or 1 positive real solutions or zeros. Now let's do the negative. So the negative is going to be f of negative x. So 6 times negative x cubed minus 2 times negative x squared plus 3 times negative x minus 1. OK, so again, negative x raised to the third power is negative. So negative x cubed times 6 is a negative 6x cubed. Negative x squared is a positive x squared. But positive x squared times negative 2 is a negative 2x squared. Negative x times 3 is a negative 3x and, negative, and then minus 1. So now we text these sign changes. And guess what? There's no sign changes for the negatives, right? So therefore, I have 0 negative real solutions. So now, basically, these just kind of flip-flopped. So the number of complex is if I only had one positive real solution, that means I have two complex solutions. Because remember, they have to add up to three zeros. If I have, one, if I have three positive, well, that's all my solutions, right? I only have the degree is 3. So if all of my solutions are positive 3, then I'm going to have two, then I'm going to have zero complex solutions. OK, um, example, example. So let's go and get into these next two. I'm going to do this a little bit quicker, um, but I will explain my way as I go. So positive to negative, that's 1. Negative, 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 negative to positive. So here, this is my positive. I can subtract 2 from 2. So it's going to be 2 or 0 positive solutions. OK, if I do negative, that's going to be f of negative x. Now, to kind of speed this up, I'm just going to kind of write in what the answers would be. Negative to the fourth power is going to be positive. So that's a positive 7x to the fourth. That's going to be negative. Negative x cubed times negative 5 is a positive 5x cubed. X, negative x squared is going to be a positive x squared, but positive x squared times negative 1 is a negative x squared. Negative x times a negative 1 is a positive x, and then plus 4. And again, if you want to plug them in, I'm just trying to make this go by a little bit quicker. So now for the negative, again, I have positive to positive, positive to negative, negative to positive. So again, I have 2 or 0 negative, negative, oops, I got to say real, real solutions. OK, so now let's kind of go through the test. All right, Let's say I have 0 positive and 0 negative real solutions. Well, I have to have four solutions, right? Four zeros. So therefore, if I have 0 positive real, 0 negative real, that means I have to have 4 complex. Now, what if I have 2 positive but 0 negative? Well, that means I have to have 2 complex. 
So I could have two positive and two complex. Or I could have two negative and two complex. Or I could have two positive, two negative, and zero complex. So I could have four or two or zero complex solutions. And again, remember, um, these are keep on adding, a neg adding an even number there, and it works out. All right, let's get into the last one here. So to find the positive, I'm again just going to find the sign changes. Positive to positive, positive to negative, negative to positive, and that's it. So for positive, I can only have 2 or 0 positive solutions. OK, now let's do the negative. So negative would be f of negative x equals. So x to the negative x to the fifth is going to be negative. Negative um, x to the fifth times 4 is a negative 4x to the fifth. That becomes positive times a positive 12 is a positive 12x to the fourth. That becomes negative. Negative times negative 12 is a positive 12x cubed. That's positive times negative 9 is a negative 9x squared. That becomes negative, negative 10x plus 24. So let's see how many we have. We have one sign change, two sign changes, three sign changes. So I could have 3 and then minus an even number 2, which would be 1, which I think is just like that one. So I could have 3 or 1 negative real solutions. Keep on forgetting real. OK, so again, how many complex solutions we can have? Well, no matter what, we're going to have at least one real solution, right? Because we have to have either 3 or 1 real solutions. So. Notice how, um, notice how my degree is 5. That means I'm going to have 5 solutions. So let's pretend we have the least amount of real solutions. Let's pretend we have 0 positive and 1 negative. Therefore, we could have, therefore, we'd have to have, so if we had only one real solution, that means we'd have to have 4, 4 complex. Well, what if we had 2 positive and 1 negative? That would be 3 solutions. So we'd have to have 2 complex solutions. Or what if we had 2 positive and 3 negative? Therefore, that means we'd have already our solution, so we'd have 0 complex solutions. I'm not, I didn't write or for those, those, but 4 or 2 or 0. Or you could just write 4, 2, 0 complex solutions. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you use Descartes' rule of signs to determine the number of positive, negative real zeros, and complex zeros. Thanks.